The Commodore 64, now in a home family pack. A family pack containing the world's number one selling home computer. Asterix and the Magic Cauldron, based on the popular French Asterix comic books. In North America, the Commodore 64 version was released as Ardok the Barbarian, without the Asterix license. Basically, since the comic character Asterix is mainly known in Europe, the main character was turned into a barbarian for this release, but the plots remained the same. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears, whilst we check out the European version. A story about heroics, bravery and extreme clumsiness, where you take the role of the veritable Gaul, Asterix, along with your inseparable friend, Obelix, on your task to rescue seven pieces of a magical cauldron. An arcade adventure with a heavy dose of combat included for good measure. Walking around will instantly introduce you to one of the annoying features in the game. This is the fact that the screens, although looking very good graphically, take an enormous amount of time to draw. However, when you get used to this, it soon doesn't become as noticeable. Or maybe I'm just more patient now in my old age, not sure. Anyway, count to 10 and it'll be loaded. Wandering around the game's many locations looking for bits of a cauldron would have made for a very lacklustre game. So, Melbourne House ensured they added a bit of spice to the game in the shape of your ability to fight against Roman centurions. Whenever you bump into a Roman soldier or a boar, a window opens up in the screen containing two vertically stretched characters. You then thrash it out by kicking and punching your opponent. Not quite way of the exploding fist, but it certainly broke up the monotony. Fighting doesn't usually last very long, and the most common result is you being thwacked about the head several times. Then it's Romans 1, Asterix 0. Many will get frustrated with these fighting mechanics, but again, after a while, you'll get used to the controls. Moving left and right with Firepressed will cause you to punch in that direction, basically but you can also jump and duck if you last long enough. Your character Asterix has five lives, but you can also acquire superhuman strength with the magic potion you carry. There's only enough for one dose of elixir, however, and seemingly this is all you get for the duration of the game. Both Obelix and yourself frequently become hungry and you need to eat ham to keep up your strength. You can acquire ham by killing the wild boar but can only carry up to five at a time. Without this ham, Obelix will no longer follow you. Not such a big deal, since he doesn't appear to do anything anyway. At the top of the screen, there are icons to indicate how many parts of the cauldron you have in your possession. If you have any magic potion or keys, the number of lives remaining, your score, and the title of your present location. Any dedicated fans to the comics or book will undoubtedly be able to find faults with the game, but I'll admit that despite the excellent graphics, Asterix has limited lasting interest for me. For a start, all of the pieces of the cauldron appear in the same place, so once you've completed this game once, you'll quickly speed through this on consecutive runs. Still, if you're after an original arcade adventure, then it's definitely worth having a look at and firing up on your Commodore 64. By Tutatis, as they say. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, and please do be sure to let me know if you've played this game before. What did you think of it? For more Commodore nostalgia, stick around and check out the other games on the channel playlists. And if you want to continue with me on this epic journey, then maybe consider subscribing to the channel. There's a vast library of games for the Commodore 64 and Commodore Amiga yet to be revisited, and we're only just scratching the surface. Hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, bye for now.